The following is a production of Florida State University's Office of University Communications. Coming up on FSU Headlines, Florida State University dives in to recover ancient clues about the state's earliest inhabitants. Florida State unveils a special honor with a very public display of appreciation. And state lawmakers visit campus with a renewed focus on higher education. Stay tuned for these stories and much, much more. FSU Headlines starts now. Hello and welcome to another edition of FSU Headlines. I'm Dennis Schnitker. And I'm Nora Bertolet. Our top story, divers make an unexpected discovery at the bottom of a river, not far from Florida State University's campus. The discovery was actually made below the river bottom. Divers from FSU and other institutions excavating the riverbed recovered stone tools and mastodon bones. Those tools and bones prove human beings were living and working together, using sophisticated tools much earlier than scholars had previously believed. About 2,500 years earlier, those bones and tools they found, they're 14,000 years old. And that discovery is changing the way we view our history here in the Southeast United States and beyond. FSU Headlines reporter Mark Vaughn explains. This bone right here is the jaw of what we call um, a camelid. So it might have it's been not like every day that you make a discovery a that could change the way we view our history. But that's exactly what Florida State Assistant Professor of Anthropology Jesse Halligan and her colleagues have done. We just have this one data point that is unambiguous, so we've got to re-examine everything we thought we knew. So it's kind of opened up this whole new world of First American Studies. Professor Halligan and her colleagues from Texas A&M and Michigan unearthed some stone tools along Mastodon bones in the Osceola River here in Florida. The Page Ladston site, as it's known, is about 30 feet underwater in a sinkhole. And while the site has been explored for decades, the fact that these man-made cutting tools have been found with mastodon bones changes the way we should look at history. So when we went back, what we found was a stone tool that could not have been made by nature, that was definitely cultural, that dated to 14,550 years ago. Um, we reanalyzed the tusk and figured out that there's no way that the marks on it were made by any natural process, that the easiest explanation is that they were made by people. Now that's significant, A, because the site shows people were definitely here before Clovis, uh, more about 1,500 years before Clovis, but B, because it shows that um, people had to have come to the Americas by a different route than we had accepted because the ice-free corridor that supposedly people came from by land through Canada was not open until 14,000 years ago. It's pretty remarkable when you think of the historical significance this site could now have. Prior to this discovery, scientists believed a group of people called Clovis settled the area about 13,200 years ago. This site on the Osceola River is only about 45 minutes from Tallahassee and is now the oldest known site of human life in the southeastern United States, dating back 14,550 years. And so now that we have one site, I want to get from, oh, there were people here 14 and a half thousand years ago to... Who are these people? How do they live? What else do they do with their daily lives besides make a biface and cut a tusk out of the um, skull of a mastodon? Like, I want to know more about their lives. Halligan's research is published in the uh, academic journal Science Advances. Mark Vaughn, FSU Headlines. The discovery has been covered by news outlets from around the world, including the New York Times, the BBC, the Wall Street Journal, and many many more. Well, the Florida Senate is making news by making the state's public university system one of its top priorities. Florida Senate President Designate Joe Negron recently paid a visit to Florida State University with some of his legislative colleagues to talk with students and administrators about the state of Florida's future. We had five uh, leading senators uh, from uh, our, our Florida Senate come, including the next president of the Florida Senate who uh, obviously has a lot to do with uh, funding for higher education and plus several of his key uh, folks that will be in his administration. So it was a good chance to showcase Florida State, particularly proud of our students who they met with on uh, several places uh, in, in the campus. 
and I think they thoroughly uh, uh, got a good understanding of the quality of students we have and the kind of uh, programs that we have at Florida State University that's advancing the ability of our state to move ahead. I just tell you, tell my kids you're a student first, that's first, and everything else is secondary, but if you don't do the student part, you don't get to do all the other stuff. This is so probably the first time ever that I can remember uh, in my time at, uh, in, in government over here seeing a leader of one of our uh, House or Senate take the time to visit all 12 universities. So for us, it was an opportunity to, to showcase the great programs at Florida State, to showcase the quality of students that we have, and to give them some kind of understanding that these students are going out and they're making a difference in the, in the state of Florida and indeed the world for that matter. And I think we did that today. So it was a great, uh, a great opportunity for us. And I think when it comes to uh, next year's legislative session, I think uh, Florida State will stand out and I think we'll do very well in the legislative process. The Lawton Distinguished Professorship is the highest honor the Florida State University faculty bestows upon one of its own each year. The particles creep up. Professor of Polymer Science Joseph Schlenoff has been named Florida State's Robert O. Lawton Distinguished Professor for 2016. Schlenoff is known internationally for the fundamental physical and polymer science behind these coatings or thin films, some of which are useful in creating biocompatible surfaces that can be implanted into the human body. The Lawton Award bears the name of Florida State University's late Vice President for Academic Affairs, Robert O. Lawton. While the faculty selects the Lawton Award, the student body helps select the Distinguished Teacher Award, at least in part. FSU's top award for teaching, this year's Distinguished Teacher Award, went to Lisa Scott with the School of Communication, Science and Disorders. For this particular award, students initiate nominations and those Tonight, nominees are then reviewed by a faculty teaching, committee. Research, I just want to add that I'm really grateful to my students. Um, they work very hard in our program and to be recognized for them for my own work um, are recognized by them for my own work is, is really amazing. Lisa Scott is a research associate in the FSU School of Communication Science and Disorders. She also serves as Director of Clinical Education in the University's L.L. Schindel Speech and Hearing Clinic. In all, 42 Florida State University faculty members were recognized for their excellence at FSU's annual faculty awards dinner. Every year it's focused on uh, an arts performance uh, from our faculty or alumni or students and also it's just a really festive way to close out the semester for our truly truly outstanding faculty members. Florida State University's graduate students were also honored recently. I welcome you all here this afternoon. This is a very special occasion. It's a wonderful occasion. Graduate students here are uh, so important to this university and this is our opportunity uh, to recognize your excellence. Florida State honors the achievements of its advanced degree seekers at the annual celebration of graduate student excellence. I just want to thank you for so many of the important ways that uh, you are providing support uh, academically, um, teaching, research. Awards are given in a variety of categories such as outstanding teaching assistant, student leadership, research and creativity, and excellence in visual arts. Additionally, program instructional excellence teaching associates and three-minute thesis winners were recognized. It means a lot. Uh, it means that you know, you're recognizing people that are doing good work, that are attempting to kind of change the world in their own little way, and it's, it's nice. It's something you don't see often at other institutions, and it's nice that Florida State takes the time to actually recognize the students in this way. You know, we're a big university and we often focus on the undergraduates who are 32,000 students strong but the uh, you know the graduate students play a very important role as I've said in teaching and research and uh, we wouldn't be a research university uh, if it were not for the graduate students who really work with the faculty uh, and contribute to the scholarly mission of this university. Speaking of the graduate school, several of Florida State University's graduate programs rank high in the U.S. News and World Report's most recent list of, what else, best graduate schools. FSU's graduate programs in public affairs, education, and law 
are ranked in the 2017 edition of Best Graduate Schools. The College of Social Sciences and Public Policy's City Management and Urban Policy program breaks into the top 10 at number 8 in the first U.S. News rankings of the discipline since 2012. And FSU's Criminology program came in at 7th in its discipline. To see the complete list of FSU's graduate program rankings, according to the U.S. News & World Report, go to news.fsu.edu. Now to some sad news here at Florida State University, as the university community mourns the loss of renowned professor and Nobel laureate Sir Harold Croto. Sir Harry passed away in May at the age of 76. Croto was a world-class chemist, teacher, mentor, and friend. He joined the Florida State University faculty in 2004, capping off a brilliant career that included the 1996 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the discovery of the Buckminster Fullerene molecule. The discovery of buckyballs, as they're known, opened up a new world of chemistry. During his time at Florida State, he embraced technology and helped students around the world via the GeoSet program, which allowed students to create video and web-based productions. Croto also gave lectures throughout his time at Florida State entitled Opening Minds, which he certainly had a knack for doing. Sir Harry Croto is survived by his wife of more than 50 years, Margaret, and his sons, Stephen and David. He was 76. He will be missed. I will forever bleed garnet and gold, and I will forever be here at heart. Florida State is monumental in my academic and professional career, I think. The professors are some of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. We've always known that we wanted to go to Florida State. We're going to go to Florida State. FSU helped me so much by giving me all the resources that I could need to succeed. An amazing experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. When you buy a Florida State University license plate, you're not just showing your school spirit. You're supporting students like us. In the lab. In the classroom. And in the library. Putting this tag on your vehicle helps Florida State students achieve their dreams. So show your pride. Purchase an FSC license plate today. Welcome back to FSU Headlines. I'm Dennis Schnitker. And I'm Nora Bertolet. In our next headline, we celebrate philanthropy at Florida State University. That's right, Nora. FSU honors its most generous donors with a PDA, a very public display of appreciation. Take a look. This is the first time we've ever been able to recognize cumulative giving across the university. And so saying thank you to the people who make the difference is really important. People don't give because they want their name on a wall. People give because they want to accomplish something meaningful with the money that, that they've been able to earn. I think that, that it's just important for us to give back and to pay it forward. We are so grateful, so grateful for everything that you all have done for Florida State University to make it truly an excellent place and a place where dreams come true, Florida State University. So without further ado, let's look at the board. The individuals and the organizations listed on the wall represent more than $675 million in direct support of Florida State. And that's that's simply amazing. And so Part of having a donor wall is our ability to say thank you, but it's also a signal to the university community that philanthropy is an important part of our mission, and it takes philanthropy for us to be able to compete on that national market. Well, we feel very honored to give back to the university that gave me, my husband, and both of our kids a great start in life, and we love FSU. Florida State University recently recognized one of the Sunshine State's most accomplished artists with one of its greatest honors. Florida State Headlines reporter Lauren Meyer has more from the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters Ceremony. I'm John Thrasher, I'm president of Florida State University and welcome all of you to this honorary degree ceremony which recognizes the significant contributions 
of Christopher Still to his community, the university, and the state of Florida. Christopher Still was chosen by the FSU Honorary Committee to receive an Honorary Doctor in Humane Letters degree for his works of art that showcase the culture and history of Florida. I think Chris's meanings, Chris's imaginings are more expansive and speak more lyrically to the soul of Florida. He draws inspiration from what he sees of man and nature and transforms it into paintings of inestimable beauty. My dad got his doctorate here, and then my daughter graduated uh, from FSU. And I really didn't, as an artist, I just never really thought I could reach that level. I know how much work goes into getting a degree, so this is, this is quite an honor. As a Florida native with a rare and exceptional talent, you demonstrate a genuine love for the splendor of Florida and a deep understanding of the daily lives and struggles of its people. Christopher Still's work can be found across the United States, but it can also be found here at the Florida State Capitol. For John Thrasher to be on the phone to say, we have this major space. I want to lift up the appreciation of Florida. I want to create an atmosphere and decorum that shows how beautiful Florida is and highlight its historic past. That one sentence, what he said, had been my, my purpose since I was, you know, a, you know, a few years old. Chris is an incredible artist, incredible historian for the state of Florida, and you combine those two things together, uh, I think Florida State University represents that. After years of painting Florida's history, Christopher is now an important piece of Florida State University's. For Florida State Headlines, I'm Lauren Meyer. And if you ever get the chance, you should definitely check out those murals inside the House of Representatives at the State Capitol Complex. What an incredible legacy Christopher Still has here in the state of Florida. I would say the honor is definitely well deserved. And speaking of art, did you know Florida State University's College of Social Work hosts a special summer camp every year? Boys and girls spend a week on FSU's campus learning all about college during the arts and athletics camp, and they have a blast doing it. We're not going to lie, a lot of campers come for the sports, but they get a whole lot more. So we kind of use the athletics to kind of hook the students into it, and some of them really definitely gravitate towards that. But we're also showing them that there's ways to go to college that don't necessarily revolve around being good at athletics. The camp focuses on the opportunities that college provides, as well as enhancing leadership and communication skills. They'll be participating a lot with our club sports as well as our athletics just to kind of get out into the nice Florida weather and play some games. They'll also be doing some art projects throughout the week, um, and they always put the art projects around a theme, so it's definitely something that they get to play in with throughout the week. While the FSU College of Social Work takes the lead, other campus partners include the FSU Career Center, the Center for Academic Retention and Enhancement, and the Athletics Department. At the end of the week, we definitely see a change in our campers. Um, they are definitely more encouraged about college, and they definitely learn about some of the other avenues on how coming here really is a possibility. And once attending college becomes a possibility, well, life becomes a whole new ball game. For more information on the College of Social Work's Arts and Athletic Camp, visit csw.fsu.edu. Elsewhere on Florida State's campus, the Florida State University Police Department's motorcycle unit played host to fellow officers from around the country during the annual Capital City Challenge. This challenge is a unique event that helps motorcycle officers train and raise funds for worthy causes. Law enforcement teams from around the state participate in the motorcycle challenges and raise funds and awareness for great causes like the Leon County Special Olympics. The bigger picture is we're raising money for the kids. It's all about Leon County Special Olympics and raising money for kids organizations. We've donated to Kids First. In the past 10 years, the Capital City Challenge has successfully donated more than $120,000 to the Special Olympics of Leon County. And Nora, you can expect that number to increase after this year's event. Well, coming up next on FSU Headlines, we head out to the ballpark to catch up with baseball and softball. <laughs> It's
It's another banner year for the Seminoles on the diamond. We'll find out more when FSU Headlines returns in a moment. Welcome back to FSU Headlines. I'm Dennis Schnitker. And I'm Nora Bertolet. It's time to talk sports. As the college athletics calendar winds down and summer heats up, FSU spring sports teams wrapped up the school year looking for titles. The golf, track, baseball, and softball teams all made a run, but how did they do? We look to FSU Headlines reporter Mark Vaughn for that answer. He joins us now. Mark? Hey, Dennis and Nora. Well, as the temperatures rise during the summer months, so do the stakes during postseason play. The softball team heading to the Women's College World Series out in Oklahoma with high hopes, and they played their way into the Final Four, if you will, taking on Auburn in the double elimination round, looking for a shot at a national championship. After beating UCLA and Michigan, the Knowles played a comeback performance for the ages, trailing 7-4 before a three-run bomb tied things up and sent things into extra innings. But it was not to be this year. The Seminoles forced extra innings, but fell 8-7 to, to the Auburn Tigers in eight innings to end their run at the 2016 Women's College World Series. On the baseball diamond, the Knowles looking to make it to the College World Series themselves, but the Super Regionals the last stop before that trip. The Regional Championship going to the Knowles by a score of 18-6 over the Jags, and that put them in the Super Regional against, you guessed it, rival Florida. And finally, we all know the Rio Olympics are set to begin this August, and some Knowles are hoping to compete. But first, there are a few track stars looking for NCAA gold after the ACC championships here in Tallahassee. The women's track and field team taking home the trophy this year in the ACC championships after outstanding performances by some seniors and some underclassmen. FSU got the outdoor title, finishing with 106.5 points, that's 18 and a half points clear of runner-up Miami and third place Clemson. Several Knowles headed to the NCAA championships during the month of June. Well, that's going to do it for me, but remember you can keep up with all things Seminole Athletics by visiting Seminoles.com. We're going to send things back to you. Thanks for that update, Mark. Sometimes those spring sports schedules conflict with other university activities. Case in point, not all FSU's graduating student athletes were able to participate in the university's formal commencement ceremonies at the end of April. But Florida State wanted to make sure it recognized those hardworking students. Check it out. Fields home away from home. I mean, we spend more time here uh, with these guys and at the field than, than anywhere else really in the last few years. So. Um, yeah, do, getting to do it here is it's pretty special. It was a great experience, just knowing that you completed something that you worked so hard for. Um, you, you know, you put a lot of time on the field and off the field as well in the classroom, studying a lot, and just knowing that you finally, you know, you got a degree. Um, all that hard work's kind of paid off. Is it's a good feeling. Making connections too. Coach Martin's great. All the coaching staff has been so welcoming, and I was just excited to be a part of it. To be honest. I would never trade trade the world for the last four years. I had a great, the greatest time of my life here, but um, I'm ready to hopefully to get drafted. That's a, that's the main thing, and I'm um, just trying to live out my dream, keep playing baseball. That's like our chance to put the cabin gown on and really uh, get in front of the people that matter to us, the fans and uh, all our teammates and stuff, and they acknowledge us for graduating. So it's pretty special. It's kind of kind of cool, you know. I hereby confer upon you the appropriate... These guys, they've supported me throughout all the years here at baseball. Um, they're in the stands throughout all the games, cheering me on. You know, knowing that they're going to be up there for... It's kind of like they're a part of it, too. They've helped you throughout all these years, and it's just a good little closing ceremony. Seven FSU baseball, two softball, and two track and field student athletes took part in the special ceremony. Congrats to all our graduates. That just might be their biggest win of the year. Olympic fever is heating up as the countdown to Rio 2016 draws closer. 
FSU Headlines reporter Matt McMahon shows it's not just our student athletes working hard to earn Olympic glory. Chris Stanley knows track and field. The Florida State University researcher ran competitively in high school and college. He's still involved with the sport, but now in a different capacity. Chris has been selected to travel with the U.S. track and field team to the World Championships this summer in Poland. I think I got a little more excited when some of my uh, apparel showed up. It came more real to me. You know, UPS delivered, UPS driver delivered this, you know, bag with all this USATF apparel and um, the instructions demanded that I try it on to make sure it fit. It became a little more real, you know, at that point. The opportunity will not only benefit his own work, but of course help the athletes of the U.S. track and field team as they prepare for their last competition where they can qualify for the 2016 Olympics. And as an alumnus of Florida State University and an adjunct professor at FSU's College of Education Sports Psychology program, Chris is excited to bring this experience back to a new generation of Seminoles. Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled again, not just for the opportunity uh, to be able to, to do this work, but also in some respects do it on behalf um, of you know the university and coming back coming back afterwards with um, an experience to share with the community and um, and the students here. It's Chris is one of two sports psychologists chosen to travel with the USA track and field team in late July. For FSU Headlines, I'm Matt McMahon. Thanks for that report, Matt. It's great to see FSU playing such interesting roles in sports, athletics, and research at so many different levels. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of FSU Headlines, but you can see more news from Florida State University anytime at Florida State 24-7. It's the official news website of Florida State University, and you can find it online at news.fsu.edu. For Dennis and everyone here at Florida State University, I'm Nora Bertolet. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.